two, one. Hello everyone, let's talk about FM. FM bass, frequency modulation. Okay, so what you got on the screen here is a FM VST and Treasure Buster used this uh, plugin exclusively. In many cases, several instances open at once. Um, this is FM Drive by Ali James Lab. Ali James, uh, he's a really good VST creator because he makes VSTs with a purpose. Um, they're not just uh, VSTs that are... They're not necessarily always trying to be like, here's something new that's never been done before, but it's always like, here's something old, but here's, uh, here's an angle on it that uh, is not being done by other emulations and other VSTs. So FM is not new to the VST community, but... A Sega Genesis uh, inspired VST is definitely new and as you can tell by the the uh, the interface here it uh, it looks like a Sega Genesis which is awesome uh, for inspiration especially for a project like um, uh, Treasure Buster so what I'm gonna do today I'm not gonna be the guru of FM because I am not I I'm not a I, I actually I can't break it down really that well I don't think anyone can uh, most people can't anyways um, but what I can do is tell you how it works for me and tell you how it can work for you and tell you like when you hear it what you're hearing at least uh, in the most basic of terms so I got myself a uh, oscilloscope open here so you can see the waveform and um, all FM is or at least all FM that you've heard in music except for like the earliest versions of it or something uh, is digital. It's um, this waveform here, this uh, sine wave you're seeing, it's a digital sine wave. So there's ones and zeros telling it what to look like. There's no voltage going in to, to create that sound. Um, sorry, I'm really nervous about my setup working today. But it looks like it is. So what FM is, is a series of operators. And an operator is basically just a set of values and um, you can arrange the operators in different ways so you can see this little picture up here here's four operators it doesn't matter what they're labeled um, but just the little boxes themselves there's four of them and this one goes into that one which goes into this one which goes into that one so all we've got right now is the last one in the in the chain audible and so you're seeing it but this uh, sine wave you're seeing represented over here is the digital representation of what all of these uh, going into each other sound like. So since we only have the last one on, it's just a sine wave. But if we were to turn the next one in the chain on, you would start to see a digital representation of what it is doing to the next one. And that's where modulation comes in. So frequency modulation, FM, what we're saying is like we want to modulate uh, this frequency by another frequency or another set of values or another set of envelopes and envelopes and blah 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 blah. So... The best way I can show you what FM is, um, is to just turn up the next one in the chain so you can see on this uh, diagram over here, let me make that a little bigger, just what the heck is going on. Um, it doesn't have to make sense yet, but hopefully, um, hopefully this will, uh, you know, your eyes and your ears will be able to come into uh, agreement here. So let's turn up the next one in the chain. Oh, you son of a gun. You're gonna do this to me now. Don't you do this to me now! Always on top? Right. Can't be always on top. I've had to fiddle with this so much. Okay. I think, yes. Alright. Watch the sine wave now. what's happened here? Uh, we basically added one sine wave to another sine wave and they're multiplying and they're adding or they're they're multiplying the waveform so if if one waveform say from the, the one that's feeding into it is up and the other one is down they combine so it's kind of like going back to uh, high school math where you had your Texas Instruments uh, and uh, calculators and you were like creating sine waves on a chart and stuff you're basically adding up the the values together and creating a, a little sine wave at the end that has like multiple things affecting it. So let's let's get a little crazier here. You can see the way this looks here. It's a it's a tighter sine wave than we originally started with. 
Um, so... And you notice how the, uh, the, the total width of the, uh, the wavelength, um, it stays the same. So it, it ends over here before it sort of repeats. Alright, so that's a crash course in, in the weird sounds of FM. And of course, um, you wouldn't normally just have it play like this, where it's just the note sustained uh, entirely. You would want to put a little envelope on the M2 now, the, so the one feeding into the last one. And they're labeled C2, M2, blah, blah, it doesn't matter. Uh, one feeding into another one is, is the only relationship you need to know. So if you're feeding into another operator, you're a modulator. And if you're being fed into, you're a carrier. And I guess the one at the very end of the chain is what you would just call the carrier in general. Uh, because it's the one that carries the final sound out, but it's all relative and um, and in this configuration This one's a modulator to that one. This one's a modulator to that one This one's a modulator to that one and this one's the carrier at the end, but these are all carriers for the ones that come before them but um, This is not necessarily a desirable sound um, <clears throat> So uh, you would add a little envelope to it, so it will go like and sorry if there's a little clicking in there. I don't know if that's because of my recording setup or, or what's going on here, but uh, eh. You get the idea. That's what this one is all about. Just getting the idea. So we've got a couple of other operators here that we're not using, so what are you supposed to do about that? Um, FM's kind of, uh, you're like, you can push it too hard and then get ah, crazy sounds. And you don't necessarily want a sound like that. So if you, you leave it a little back, just back it up just a bit. And then let's add the next one in the chain. And what's going to happen here is it doesn't affect... Um, it's going to basically add an even tighter sine wave to what we have right now. Because it adds... It modulates this one, which then modulates that one. So if you're modulating this one, and it looks like a weird shape, then now that's the shape that modulates the next one. So it gets like tighter and tighter uh, concentric wiggling sine waves. So let's turn this one up and see what it looks like. Check it out. I think you can even see the original shape of the sine wave in there as well. You can see we've basically taken that original sine wave and added ah, like crazy jagged lines to it. And of course, again, you wouldn't necessarily want this to be your sound, but you'd want like... So let's back it off just a bit. Alright, we're getting somewhere here. So the last one in the chain here uh, has a little arrow that goes back into it, uh, if you can see right here. And that's what we call feedback, the feedback loop. So this is a normal operator, just like the other ones, but it uh, it comes with an added bonus of that not only does it modulate the next one in the chain, which then modulates the next one, la 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 la, uh, it also modulates itself. So what that means is it kind of has a recursive uh, look to it. So instead of it being a sine wave, it's a sine wave that has like a lot of little uh, jagged lines in it that get smaller and smaller and smaller. Sort of. I mean, that's, that's how I can kind of describe it. Um, but it, it adds a noisiness, so it's almost similar to a cutoff knob on an analog synth. So let's see uh, if we can hear that sound. So let's turn up the feedback a bit because we want to hear the effect, so that's what this knob is for. It's fader. Let's turn it up even more. There we go. So you can see, like, you can you can push FM to the point of it just being chaotic noise. Let's turn that one down a bit. Turn you up. Not necessarily the best patch. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend this patch be used in anything, but um, another cool thing about FM Drive uh, that I used sparingly throughout Treasure Buster is that um, 
one of the cool things that Ali did here is that uh, he simulates or emulates the uh, the different model Genesis. Um, so there's two model Genesis Genesis uh, uh, that um, there was like a programming feature in them that um, in order to digitally recreate some of the sounds or any of the sounds, uh, it needed to truncate some of the waveform in certain cases. So it would add this uh, this kind of digital distortion that was only really audible as a instrument was kind of fading out. So uh, let's see if we can hear some of that. This is just another FM patch. It wasn't the one I wanted to add, but whatever. If it, we'll do it live. So here's um, here's the sound of the distortion on this bass patch. Uh, here's it clean. Here it has a nice trail off. Nothing, nothing wacky yet. But if we add uh, the model one distortion, you can see even in the little picture down here how it's cutting off some of the waveform. That's kind of what ha is happening uh, that you're hearing as it trails off. So take a listen. Get it with a higher note. It's kind of, you might have to have headphones on to hear this, but it's a little more uh, present in the Model 2, which got a little nuttier. You can actually hear it stepping through. That's uh, that's Genesis Model Two distortion, and there was a couple games that actually used this in a um, like musical way. I'm not sure if it was on purpose, but Streets of Rage would do that, um, like in the intro to Streets of Rage One or Two. I can't remember, but it would have that, and you would hear that distortion, and that's how I remember hearing those songs. So it's something unique to the uh, the Sega Genesis, uh, which is very cool. There, even that kind of sounds like it. The Streets Rage. Love it. I love it. Okay, we've got a we got another patch from scratch here. You've seen what FM can do. Um, so oh yeah, uh, the little boxes up here. These are basically uh, the ways that you can configure these boxes are called an algorithm. So this is algorithm one, two, three, four, five, 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 five. So you can see there's a couple wacky ways you can do this, and each one of these kind of has inherent to itself a certain sound, like, um, I think this one does pads really well, and this one does, I can't remember, blah, blah, blah. These ones are, like, they just do different things. In fact, uh, the Yamaha DX7, no, it was, no, it was actually like a PDF for the Sega Genesis internal hardware. I'm not sure where I saw it, but it actually labeled these, like, use this one for bells and use this one for guitars. And uh, they did say use this one for guitars because each one feeds into itself so it gets noisier and noisier and noisier. So that's that. Just wondering what else I should talk about. I mean, that went that went off without a hitch. Okay, um, how about this? Let's let's make another FM patch real quick from scratch. We're gonna do a two operator patch. So um, C2 is all we're hearing right now. Again, that's right here. And I'm gonna add some F or uh, some feedback to it, so I'm only going to use M1, and these two are just going to stay silent. So it's really only these two feeding the sound that you're hearing. And uh, I want I want this to have a sustained note, so that you you only hear what the effect of M1's envelope is. Let's turn M1 up a bit more. Yeah, okay. Now we're getting into some FM territory. Take a look at that waveform. That's just so funny. Starts all messed up and then just like goes to... What you're seeing there is this envelope represented. M2's capability to affect the sound starts up the top and uh, ramps down to nothing. Ooh. Ooh, there's an even better example. Sorry if that's hard on your ears. If I use a lower note, it gets all squiggly. It's not the same. So let's turn up some feedback because we don't have it on very high right now. Right, I don't have any 
uh, vibrato on here. So uh, before we go any further, hey, check it out. One of the things that kept me from like diving into FM sounds uh, at, from the onset was that it's really hard to create vibrato uh, because it's not there's no like vibrato button there. There almost never is, but it's even harder with uh, FM because you kind of have to set an LFO. So in this case, you click the LFO button and turn LFO on. The Sonic's running here. You can see that uh, LFO is on and it defaults to being synced to your uh, your project BPM. So that's good. And ba -ba 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 -ba. frequency, uh, I think this is the frequency depth. I'm not sure, but I like it at, at three, just personal preference. And I MIDI learn the, uh, the pitch MD here. PMD. And that's it. Let's get funky. It's time to get funky with our FM. So we can we can push this a little further, actually. There's another thing in FM uh, where uh, the you know how I say that uh, this one modulates that one, and then you see the effect of that over here. Um, well, you can change uh, certain things about how it affects the other one. So let's open up M1. Here, so you can see just everything that's going on in M1. So HS here is, I think, the the speed of the envelope. So it's way more punchy, even though the the uh, envelope stays the same. Uh, here, it goes way faster or slower. I actually, like it going a little faster there. Maybe two. Okay. Um, and then uh, multiply here is basically on, a, on another FM VST, this would be your ratio. So this is saying uh, modulate the next one in the chain at a ratio of, so one I think is like one to one, so you feed into it at like a perfect interval. So it's not doubling it, but it's like, I think it's like a maybe, um, what's the word here? I don't know if it's exponential or what it is, but uh, you can, when you set, uh, something to do with the harmonics, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I told you, I'm not a guru. I'm not a guru. Uh, so if we set this one to a lower uh, ratio than the one it modulates, so zero, which doesn't necessarily mean zero, it just means one less than one. Um, it's at it's at a lower ratio now than uh, C2 is. So M1 is now at a ratio of zero, and this one's at a ratio of one. So all this will do is it's saying modulate the next one in the in the chain by a lower frequency than it is. So it basically makes it a bass sound. Which is kind of what we had before, but you can play it higher up on the keyboard and you get uh, bassy sounds. And there's some there's some effects to having that. But whatever, you get it? So uh, we can actually do one more cool thing here. One more cool thing um, is... Uh, and the Sega Genesis didn't really utilize this a lot um, because it had to make a separate patch for every time it wanted to do this. But we, thanks to, like, this is why Allie James was so smart about the way he uh, made this VST. Um, you can turn on the velocity so that it will affect, you know, most, most VSTs these days allow you to have velocity. So the harder you press, the louder it gets. But by default, um, you can see all these checkboxes here are off. This is, uh, anytime you check one of these, it's saying let velocity affect this uh, operator by whatever we've set here. So uh, 127 is all the way off, 0 is all the way on. So if I set it at like, let's just go somewhere in the middle, 64, whatever, 65. And let's change it so our feedback operator is affected by our velocity. So now think about that just now. By itself, C2 is a sine wave that you that just sounds like a sine wave. And when we add M1 to it, it has that FM sound. Brow, brow, brow. So now if we set, set that FM sound to have velocity uh, affecting it, the harder we press now, the more boing, 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 boing we get. So now you can get a more dynamic uh, patch. You 
when I touch soft, it's almost just a sine wave. If I touch a little harder, it's a bigger sine wave. Actually, let's see that. That's awesome. Awesome. Look at that. So it doesn't look so good in the low end, but it sounds better. Yeah. And that's simple. That's still just two ops. We're only using two operators right now. So another uh, thing related to what I just showed you that you can do, let's take M2, let's break M2 into the mix here. Boom. So, oh, oh, you ruined it. It sounds like garbage now. Ooh, not at the low end. Still sounds kind of good. A little metallic -y, but you know, whatever. Uh, what was I doing here? Right. So you go in here and you can start changing the envelope so it's not. Like, well, we can make it a faster one anyway. It's getting there, right? So it's it's basically doing the same thing. M1 and M2 have the same envelope right now. It's a it's a fast little ramp down like this. But what if? Um. What if we make it a much sharper cutoff? And I I want to push the crap out of this thing. So what I'm gonna do? Uh, what I'm gonna do? So it is pushing right now. I'm gonna add C1 as well. I'm gonna add C1 with a similar super fast uh, cutoff here. Yeah. And I'm going to change the multiplier for M1 and M M2 and C1. Sorry, it doesn't matter what they're called, but you know, it's just for so you know what I'm messing around here. I'm going to mess around with the ratios here. So M uh, let's make that a 2. And then let's make C1 D T one and D T two are kind of like detuning amounts, and uh, F M. The only reason it's musical is because it's all on these perfect ratios that that line up with harmonics. So if you start detuning it, you go off of the harmonics, and it just makes more of a metallic sound that is sort of dissonant. So I want that because what I'm doing here, what I'm all, what I'm building towards, is that I want to add my velocity level to this dissonant uh, pluck sounds that I've made here. So C1, and, or actually I can just make it so M2 has velocity and with M2 gets carried anything that's coming into it. So uh, let's see what Allie James distortion sounds like with a patch like this. Yeah. Although it's a little too much. So the final thing that we do with uh, FM, the final thing you want to do with FM is uh, add well, not if you're trying to make Sega Genesis. If you're trying to make authentic Sega Genesis music, you can't really do this like I'm about to, but you can still uh, create it uh, in other ways. But I like adding like, the more bitey and digital an FM patch sounds, uh, the better it sounds when you add some chorus effect to it. So let's do that now. I'm using 
doing the micro shift here again. Where's that guy? Down here. Yay! The uh, one thing I think I need to change here is... I got, um, I think my, uh, what is it? My velocity's a little too, it's too much, because then when I hit too soft a note, you almost don't hear anything. Okay, the last thing you do then, we've added a little uh, uh, micro shift there, a little chorus. So here's without. Let's add uh, a little reverb. That's with a plug-in. I'm using reverb uh, with a plug-in. Let's add some echo. Anyways. <laughs> I love fiddling, as you may be aware. So that's that's it. Uh, I've added some reverb, some echo, blah, blah, blah. So if you're doing that with... Um, I didn't use uh, plug-ins uh, to, to create this reverb and echo. Um, with Treasure Buster, I, I tried to stick truer to what the Genesis composers would do, which is basically just make another channel, a duplicated channel that is offset a bit and then lower in volume. That's how you would create an echo or that's how you would try and create a reverb. So that's what I did for that project. And um, But I just wanted to show you, like, if I were to make a project that wasn't supposed to be sort of an emulation of Genesis or arcade-style Yamaha FM chips, uh, I would, I, like, I love adding something like MicroShift uh, because it just sounds so good and you know that's a that's a tip maybe a pro tip to take away if you get a really cheap sounding synth like even those old Casio keyboards or something if you could run them through a uh, micro shift they would sound good too and if you add a little uh, you know like sustain pedal it would sound good as well so uh, you know, pro tip right there you know if it sounds bad by default try adding some chorus and some echo and some reverb it usually sounds better but that's it that's what you're that's what we're talking about when we talk about FM um, that's kind of how it's created, and uh, um, that's you know it also FM was kind of the start of the digital revolution in music because it was uh, a digital synth that wasn't creating voltage that had to make your sound. So because of that, you could store patches on like little memory chips, um, and you could plug them into your keyboard, and all your patches would be saved. And it was like they were small; they were small little uh, patches, and um, because of that, um, even on the Sega Genesis, um, I'm kind of going to all um, all over the place here, but we, we're gonna have to get used to that because there's so much to talk about with FM. But the Sega Genesis used the same exact uh, operators, so every one of these that you see operators were in the Yamaha DX7, which was the the keyboard that popularized FM in modern music and the world, I guess. So um, this. These operators, they all existed in the Yamaha DX7. They just had six of them instead of four. That's the only difference. And that's why it's really amazing that, you know, a song like Highway to the Danger Zone could be full of FM bass um, or Weird Science, Oingo Boingo, full of FM bass that is the exact same bass you can recreate on the Sega Genesis just without outboard micro shift effects and course and reverb and stuff because um, you can see I only needed two operators to create that first sound before I added the, the kind of metal metallic sound so you know the more operators you have you kind of get higher fidelity but the core the chunk is always kind of the same so you know Highway to the Danger Zone was basically a Sega Genesis song with studio gear behind it so you know it's very impressive that the Sega Genesis had that sound especially at the time 
it's kind of what made it such a unique console. But, uh, you know, with that, it's not easy to program or to even understand what you're doing with FM uh, sounds. Like, you saw how much was involved in just creating this. Like, even adding vibrato to it was like, well, you have to add an LFO, and then some of these things need a, a pitch amount that you can change. Um, so, yeah, a lot of... their there was kind of a community then that would create patches for FM sounds and then you would buy those patches commercially on a little cartridge that you would plug into your Yamaha DX7 or um, you could plug them in when you're making music for your Sega Genesis games like those composers and so there's a, a thing that I might show how to do it's not hard there's already tutorials out there but you can actually scoop out of the Sega Genesis their patches so hey Streets of Rage I like your bass patch Bloop. just take it out and you plug it into uh, something like FM Drive and FM Drive is not exactly hardware it's a recreation of hardware it's what they call an emulation of hardware so the patches um uh for better or worse sound almost exactly the same um and some of them sound identical but there's some that are just a little bit off some of the uh, ones that kind of push it a little harder so that's something uh that i'm going to focus on with this uh this series is i'm going to show you uh some of the sounds that i used and the games that i was basing my sound off of and uh, you know a big thing for me is finding out how something is made and then making my own stuff with that sort of protocol so I'd be like well how did Shining Force make the music in their game what are the instruments they use and like how did they combine these instruments to make the certain sounds that they did and then I'm like great I know how you did it now now I'm gonna add my own ideas in uh, with sort of your template your protocol and uh, yeah that's kind of that's kind of where we're going with this hopefully it's exciting uh, I like FM I like talking about FM I like hearing FM um, and I feel like it just, uh, you know, since the 80s, you know, even with the 80s, no one knew what the heck was going on. Like, I'm just going to keep going. You can turn the video off now if you've got your fill. We'll see you next video. Um, but one last thing. In the 80s, man, they had to they had to do it with knobs and buttons, and they didn't have all this graphical display. Like, it's so much easier to understand now than it was in the 80s. So I kind of feel like I need to figure it out now just uh just do my part um, because those guys they would program stuff with knobs and and picture it in their head and if you ever read like a um, if you ever read like a PDF uh, from the 80s that's like a manual for how to make FM sounds like they're they get right down into it like well if you want to make a square wave sound you have to add harmonics here 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 so they're like so each operator add this harmonic then that harmonic so it, they're talking about the ratio and uh, that's that's crazy talk so that's that's guys that understand sound on like another level so I've, I've slowly been like understanding it a bit here but you know understanding it and then putting it into practice and making your own patches world of difference crazy difference uh so you know right now i kind of i kind of stick with my two op sounds because they're they're really easy to make but when you start getting to these uh these other algorithms like i'm not sure exactly what i want here like i think these all feed into the one circle so these are all running parallel so almost like an organ where an organ is basically all the pipes that an organ has they're different uh, harmonics essentially so it's additive synthesis at that point so you add the harmonics together and then you also have one that feedbacks into itself so I'm not sure exactly what that is is that like a, a an organ that has like kind of a pad sound to it I don't know but uh, you know every time I open up a patch I like trying to figure out uh, like you can even hear my patch through that algorithm which is kind of neat too like you can just run your patch through all the algorithms if you want so this one's a total organ you can even hear it it's almost organ-like because they all play together. Um, all right, that's it. Uh, this was basically video to show you what FM looks like. So your eyes and your ears are now in sync. When you hear FM sounds, that's what you're hearing. Uh, the next video I might do before I start opening Treasure Buster songs, uh, I might just run through some classic FM sounds uh, so that you can you can further acclimate and be like, oh, that's that's been FM. That's what I've been hearing. But we'll see. We'll see you next video. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>